but you're here. It's a beautiful night for football, and uh, we've got a good one on tap tonight, Orange against Brush. We do. Uh, two teams are going in opposite directions. Last week, uh, the Brush Arcs lost big to Solon. Uh, Orange had a nice win over Normandy, so they're going in different directions, but, you know, anything can happen tonight, so we'll see what happens. Second week of the season, both teams have kind of established their offensive philosophies, and they're very much the same. Both teams predominantly like to run, but both coaches told me that they're not really afraid to, uh, to throw the ball. Lance Risen of Orange can throw the ball, 10 of 11 last week, and Ed Wallace, good athletic quarterback for Brush, so if necessary, both teams can put it up. A couple more weeks before the league season starts, and you get into the second and third week of the independence schedule, and it's time to start getting in gear. Now is the time that you want to get your philosophies down and get your teamwork together, all of the working you know, together and, and uh, getting ready to go into the conferences, and this is the time to get it done. All right, we have a beautiful night for football, as we said. Earlier, we had a chance to talk with the coaches. Let's go to those interviews now. We're here with Coach Chuck Ryzen of the Orange Lions. And, Coach, last year, very unorange like 2-8. and eight. This year, hope for a better uh, season. Yeah, you know, last year we played a lot of young kids. And, uh, you know, at a school our size, when you have four or five great years, you're going to have a year like last year. Yet, didn't have to be 2-8. and eight. You know, we had some real bad breaks early and some injuries. And uh, it was unorange like, but we'll come back now. You got a lot of skilled people back this year, uh, leading the way. I guess you'd say your son uh, Lance. Is it tough coaching your son? Well, I'll tell you, it really was when he first came to Orange when he was a sophomore. You know, you, you'd see everything you do, but not no more. I, I I barely know he's out there now. In fact, I don't coach him anymore. Mike Booth coaches him, so I just let him alone. But no, you know, I say Lance was a junior last year, and the tailback was a sophomore. And I think you said it on on, on your show last year it was pretty much a JV team, except for our defense, where we had, we lost some good, real good kids. But uh, yeah, our skill's good, and uh, you know the, the kids came back. I think with a, a dedication to do well because you know we didn't didn't have a good season last year. I mean, bottom line is we didn't play very well, and we didn't have a good year, and we want to make up for it this year. I saw some T-shirts in the locker room the other day say "Paybacks." We all know about paybacks. So let's talk a little bit though about the defense. How how do you match up this year? Well, you know, defensively. Um, we, we returned some starters, but we're fairly young, but our junior class, and, and, and basically, you know, we have like three or four seniors to start defensively, but our juniors really dominate our defense, and uh, as freshmen, they were undefeated. It's, it's one of the better classes, maybe the best class we've ever had at Orange, and uh, it's a young defense, but what they'll, you know, I say, they'll give up a yard here and there, but they'll get after you, so I, I think our defense is as we get the conference, should be real strong. It's going to take a couple weeks for it to gel. Like last week, I, I think it, we were very lucky to hold Normandy what we did. I don't think we played that well defensively. But, you know, I'm not going to, when you give somebody one first down to 45 total yards, I can't really knock it. But we, we have to get better defensively, and I think we will in the next couple weeks. All right, real quick, let's preview the CVC. I know it's a couple weeks away. Uh, throwing yourself out, assuming that you'll be right there. Who else do you look for is going to be real tough? Well, you know, first of all, you know, Solon opened up with a real impressive victory. You know, I, then there are. I don't care if Kenson lost or not last week. They're they're a good football team. Those kids have been playing for three years, and you know, you know, you always count Chardon out, and they always get in there. So, the CVC is wide open, and and I think the the team that plays you know plays the best and stays the healthiest is going to win it. But I think probably any one of maybe four or five teams can win it this year. All right. Well, good luck tonight against the Arcs. Thank you. All right. There you have it. Chuck Risen, the head coach of the Orange Lions, and now let's throw it across the field to my partner Scott Zarilla. Thank you very much, Craig. I'm with Coach Jim Shukart of the Brush Arcs, and Coach. Hate to touch on it, but we will briefly. Last week's uh, 35 to nothing loss to Stolen. Uh, any positives in that ball game last week? Well, as we looked at the tape afterwards, obviously we're disappointed, but we found that the things that the, we were having problems with are correctable ones. They were not from a lack of effort or a lack of hustle on the kids' part, so that's the important thing. Looking over some of the game notes that you gave me earlier in the week, uh, the word that comes to mind is experience. Inexperience on the offensive line, inexperience defensively. Which concerns you more? Uh, but basically our offensive line. Our defensive line is, is in pretty good shape experience-wise. A lot of them played last year, but uh, offensively we got a, a lot of young kids playing, so as, as they mature, so will we. What is your biggest concern with Orange? They, they had a, a big game last week, scored 24 points. What's the, uh, the main concern tonight? Well, they're, they're a power football team, and they're, they're a team that, that likes to run the ball right at you. They're not real fancy, and they have some real big people up front, so if, if that's our number one concern, it's stopping their, their offensive game. I talked to you just a few minutes ago, and you told me that the kids responded well considering the score of last week's ball game. So, uh, different attitude this week coming in? Oh, no, a, a better attitude, a better attitude. Uh, we understand where we made some errors and mistakes, and uh, we're about to correct them. Well, Coach Jim Shugard, thank you very much for stopping by, and good luck tonight. Thank you. We will be back with the first half of tonight's ball game right after we take this timeout. I'm 
you a big run. He may be a stuntman. When a bomb explodes, I'm the one that gets blown through the wall. But the real Blanche is helping his foster mom bring up the next generation. I'm Jake Rosner, Jill's big brother. A brother? Big brother. Don't miss Jake Steinfeld starring in... Yes! Big Brother Jake at 6, 5 Central Sunday. Just a couple of minutes away from kickoff here at Corb Field, the home of the Brush Arks. And uh, these two teams have met the last couple years in preseason, if you want to, well, not really preseason, but independent schedule. Orange has won the toss, and they will defer to the second half, which means Brush will get the ball to start this ball game. And the field is in excellent shape, as it usually is here at Brush, considering they play a big uh, soccer schedule on here. There's the starting offensive unit for Brush. Ed Wallace will be playing quarterback. Lazaro and Perlman in the backfield. You'll see Tipton running in there as well. Santorelli, Patrizzi, and Williams will be the wideouts at one time or another. You'll see more than 11 starters here. Young... Sicardi, Levick, Swolski, Ferristein, and Trone round out the offensive unit for the Brush Arks. And there's the defense for the Orange Lions. Myers, Shirk, Brown, Powell, and Weiss up front. A couple of linebackers in Perlmuter and Sanford, and then Hershey, Hatcher, Fiari, and Lustig round out the defensive backfield. Set to kick off will be Ryan Novak for brush or check it for orange and going back deep for the arcs bill tipton number 82 uh, number 26 dave perlman and the deep man in the middle is mark santorelli you see tipton on the near side standing at the 15 and perlman on the left santorelli is the deep man orange is one and oh coming into this one brush is zero and one trying to get on track here the big gcc season just down the road and uh, Scott and I both had conversations with Jim Shukart this week, and I don't know if you got the same impression I did, that he's hoping for good things this year, maybe even better things next year. Novak's kick going to be taken by Santorelli at about the seven, got a nice wedge in front, and lunges across the 30 shoestring tackle made by I believe number 69 Klaus Simfendorfer one of the many Simfendorfers that has played for Orange throughout the years and that will bring out Ed Wallace and company to start it off here for the Arcs Brush hoping to get some offense on track this week they were shut out and shut out badly last week 35 to nothing at the hands of Solon Solon looking to maybe gain playoff berth again this year full house backfield they hand the ball to Lazaro for three or four yards straight up the middle also in the backfield is Sean Carmichael Carmichael was the third back number 81 changed his number right before game time so gain of four on the play it's a second down and six for the Arks Nice crowd on hand this evening, especially on this side of the field. Up the middle again they go to the big fullback, Lazaro, and he lunges across the 40, dragging many a body for what should be another first down. And it is a first down. Nice running up the middle. Finally knocked down. I think Andre Hatcher finally put the crushing blow on him as he was dragging some people, and Hatcher hit him around the numbers and knocked him down. So it's a first down and 10 now for the Arcs. The ball is on the 42-yard line. Scott will be rejoining us momentarily. Lazaro again over the right side. So it's Lazaro to the left and Lazaro to the right. And Brush moves the football another two or three yards. Not a bad front line for Brush. 
Frank Young goes 273. Sicardi, the left guard, goes 200. Levick, 197. Swolski goes 190. And Ferristein goes 252. Wallace goes nowhere. Might have been a busted play. Finally knocked down there by number 70, Justin Weiss. And a loss of about five on the play. Scott will be joining us momentarily. They're wiring him. Well, he's, he's still being wired at this point. I'm not going to get too close, and I certainly wouldn't have a can of pop in my hand with that situation. Wallace rolls out on a third down and long. Tucks it under his arm and falls forward to about the 42-yard line. All right, I think Scott's with us now. If we want to turn him up in there and see if he's there. Is anybody here? Ah, oh, there I am. Welcome back. You're missing Can a heck you of a game. Steve, this is almost a weekly <laughs> hey, gig here, but but it works well. Bill Tipton set the punt for Brush. Steve, High what do snap. I do with all these wires? Comes to the near side. Brian Fiari is going to let it bounce out of bounds, and Orange will have the ball now at the 34-yard line. And let's take a look at that Orange offense, as you will see it on the field. See a beautiful night for football down there. And Lance Reisland, the quarterback. Brian Fiar Fiari tailback. Andre Hatcher will see some action there as well. Ari Ascari, the fullback. Tony Gray and Justin Gross will play wideouts. And we'll get to the rest of that offense after this play. Ascari is the upback. Fiari the deep back in the I formation behind Lance Reisland. Good week last week for Lance. 10 out of 11. As a matter of fact, 10 out of 10 in the first half. Fiari picks up a couple yards over the left side. And a second down and seven coming up. And there's the rest. Shirk, Weiss, Lehman, Cordish, Powell. Hershey plays tight end. And you'll see Jason Merchant, Merchant in the slot for Orange. Craig, am I, I'm in. All right. I'm in, Steve. All right, Steve. -O. You can go back to the truck. Thank you, sir. Now, where were we? Second down and seven now, Scott. There's eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. All right. Reisland to put it up. Looking downfield for some help. Looking for Justin Gross. He catches the ball across the 50 and into brush territory. And that will be a first down. Nice touch on that ball. You know, Craig, one thing I, I want to touch on that I noticed waiting to get wired up, the good field position that Orange has is what Jim Shukart told me that Brush wants. The, or, the, uh, the arc offense a little bit uh, not on track yet this year, and they're hoping to get better field better field position so that there's not as much pressure for the offense to have to go as far. There's the front line of Brush, Drew, Sicardi, Ferristein, Veronese, and Carmichael up front. <laughs> we'll get to the rest of those guys later on. So first down and 10 now for Orange. The ball is on the 47-yard line of Brush. Reisland to put it up again, being chased. Takes a heck of a hit inside the 45 to the 44. Hit by Lazaro as well as number 85, Hans Drews. Reisland picked up four and paid for it. And here's a good look at it. This is why you, you prefer that your quarterback does not run. Three guys. And uh, quarterbacks can only take so much of that. Looked also like Chris Sicardi, number... 62 on the tackle as well. So it's a gain of four, second down, and six to go for Orange. They hand it on the delay to Fieri, and nowhere. Dropped down by Dom Intorsio, number 33. A loss of a couple on the play, and that'll bring up a long third down. And there's the rest of the defense. Intorsio, Lazaro, Tipton, Probst. Williams and Perlman. Brush lined up with a gap stack that time where you take the nose tackle and you shade them to one side or the other of the ball. And they happened to guess right that time. They were shaded to the left of the ball. Just so happened that the play ran that way. They were lined up beautifully for that one. Long third down and nine coming up now for the Lions. And Reisland doesn't like what he sees and takes a timeout. So Brush, or Orange will take the 
first time out of the evening. And we hope you had a chance this week to tune into the sports page, our new uh, weekly update show. Uh, the past week really focused on the beginning of the high school football season, but stand by in weeks to come. You're going to get to see a lot more of the action that goes on in the area. And here's some phone numbers. If you're at home tonight and you're watching the, in the game and you have some information on your game tonight or any weekday after 5, it's 291-5332. Give that number a call. Leave a message. Tell us who was hot for your team, what the score was. And weekdays, 291-4006. That's 8.30 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. Give these, and that is extension 800, 291-4006, extension 800. And leave the information for us. And if you have anything you'd like to send us, you see we got a nifty little set coming together now with all kinds of memorabilia from the different schools. Seven, seven, seven Circle, Cleveland Heights, 44118. Wednesday nights, 9.30. It's the sports page on Cablevision on your community programming channel. Third down and nine now. Right up the middle they go and a big hole for Ascari. He fumbles the football and dives back on it at the 35. And they say the ball never bounces in the true direction. That would have been a great opportunity for Brush to recover this fumble had they could have. Get a good look at the block by Chris Sicardi. Up front, breaking open the hole it for the first down. And Torcio appeared to knock the ball out of his hands. And uh, you don't mind taking a timeout this early in the game if you can pick up a fir first down on third down and nine like that. First down and ten now. The ball spotted just outside the 35-yard line of Brush. Up the middle they go to Fieri. And he's across the 30 for another nice game. Sicardi and Probst on the tackle for a brush. Warming up on the far sideline. They got one of them little nifty nets that they have in the college and pro ball as uh, Ryan Novak is getting the leg loose. Coming up on the six minute mark now. Second down and five. Fiari again. Hit by Antorcio, very active, very active. And thus far, uh, Brush haven't really been able to slow Orange down, even though I've noticed that they're shading to the right side of the ball. They're guessing correct on defense. Uh, Coach Shukard said that the defense liked, as I mentioned before, go with the uh, the gap stack, moving the, the nose tackle one side or the other, and also shading the defense to one side of the ball or the other in anticipation of them running the offense in one direction. Thus far, they've guessed correct. They just haven't stopped them. Third down, it's less than a yard. Orange had better hurry. They took a long time getting this play in. There you get a good look at that uh, shade on defense. Ascari goes nowhere, may have lost the yard, hit head on. John Veronese, number 55, with the big hit. And I think they'll spot it, uh, maybe a loss of a half a yard. So fourth down and less than two to go. And I believe you got to go for it here. I don't think that the leg of Ryan Novak is going to be strong enough to put this one through from about 40-some yards. What do you look for here? Are you going to put it up? I, I may look for a uh, little bit of a, a play action. Fourth down, less than two. They run the option. Reisland cuts it back and gets the first down, I believe. I believe he crossed the 25-yard line. He was picked up again by Veronese. Well, that's going to be a tough call for the officials to make because of the, the forward motion. They are going to give it to him, but a lot of times the player, it's hard to gauge exactly where he was before he was pushed backwards. Let's see if we can get a better angle on the replay. Not, can't really tell with the yard markers. Torcio and Veronese are all over the field for this brush defense. Down under, coming up on the four minute mark now. Nice drive so far for Orange. Ball inside the 25 yard line. Another first down and 10. Right up the middle they go to Ascari. Breaking some tackles close to the 15 yard line. So when you run the ball like this, 
even though you've got a talented quarterback like Lance Ryzen, you may only have to throw the ball 15 times. Well, you know, this is what Orange wants to do. They want to control the ball game, control the tempo, grind it out on the ground. And again, when you're talking a little bit of uh, inexperience on Brush's offense, they too are a running team, so they're not going to be passing the ball as much. And you want to get them in the hole if you can, if you're Orange. The ball is on the 17-yard line, second down and three. This time it's Fiari. Big hole up the middle to the five and down close to the four yard line. Bill tipped it. One of the defensive backs was hanging on and the ball will be inside the five. It's a first down and goal. Dom and Torsio with a great lead block also. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see it on the replay. <laughs> so the ball is spotted just inside the five. Big offensive line of Orange doing the job up front. Reisland hangs on to it and gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage and spun around and dropped. Sean Carmichael led the way for Brush and Torcio there again. Dave Perlman doing a good job playing the option as he stayed with the defensive back and allowed the linebackers to key on, on Reisland and that's how that play got to be stopped. Good defense by Brush. Gain of a yard or so. Second down and goal now for about the three and a half, four yard line. Fiari gets dragged down from behind. This time is Berenice. Somebody missed an assignment somewhere. Veronese got in there just too easily and too quickly. Forward momentum of Fiari takes him down inside the three, maybe to the two-yard line. Looks I like the two from where we're sitting. If Brush can hold them here and allowing Orange to maybe only come away with the field goal, this would be something that's really going to be a booster for, uh, for the Brush defense because they've moved the ball well, starting to get about their own 40. But to hold them without a touchdown would be a, a big accomplishment at this point in the ballgame. The middle they go to Fiari, and he is in. Touchdown. Like yes, he got in. Looked like the second effort. Late signal, so the tailback. Ryan Fiari goes in from two yards out. So he brought towards his first possession of the game. That's the touchdown. Ryan Novak in to attempt the point after. Justin Gross to do the holding. And drills it right through. So with 1.45 to go here in the first quarter, it is Orange on top of Rush by 7 to nothing. Let's run through, since we had some difficulties before, Scott, let's run through the past history of these two teams. Well, they've played seven games, and they've gone all the way back to 1952. Uh, Brush holds the, uh, the the edge five games to one. There was also a tie back in 1954. These two teams scored, uh, came to a 12-12 deadlock. Most recently, it was last season. Uh, the Brush Arcs came away with a 15-13 win. They've played the past three seasons in 89. Orange came away with a 14-0 win, and back in 1988, it was a 17-3 brush win. But before that, the teams hadn't played since 1955. 1952 through 1955. So uh, after a long stretch, a long layoff, these two teams got it back together and have uh, gone. Uh, uh, brush has won two of the last three encounters. And Brush only had two victories last year, and one of them was against these Orange Lions. As we said, I think that's... the. One of the few times that Chuck Risen's had a losing season here at Orange or anywhere else he's been for that matter for a long time. Novak's kick is going to go out of bounds. Flags will fly and we'll do it all over again. Slipped and fell on that uh, kickoff. So Brush hoping to mount some offense. They haven't scored yet this season. Granted, we're only into the first quarter of the second game, but uh, offense stalled after one first down, the last possession. It's got to be a concern of Jim Shukart's at this point. Got to try to put something together. It really is. That's what he told me earlier in the week, that uh, 
the offense needs to get some confidence. That's why he said one of the bigger keys was to try and get good field position, shorten the field, try to begin it at, at your own 40 at best if you can, and really shorten the field and give the, the offense an opportunity to come away with some points to gain the confidence. Uh, he's, he's confident in the running game, and he wants to try and stay away from the passing if at all possible, even though he did mention that he has a lot of confidence in Wallace if necessary. Novak does it again, this time a deep kick right down the middle taken by Santorelli. Got the wedge in front of him and some room up the middle. And he's tripped up nicely. The kicker, Ryan Novak, just threw an arm out there and tripped him up or it would have been gone to the races. Well, I'll tell you one thing, John Veronese was very lucky that he did not get called for a penalty. The, uh, he did a very blatant clip on the place kicker didn't get called that otherwise we could have brought back 15 yards but this goes to what Jim Shukard wanted excuse me Jim Shukard 40, uh, 47 yard line a great field position for the brush arcs yeah it sure looked like it from here I, I don't know if, if maybe the kicker turned his back on uh, the block or not but it sure looked like they were going to call something Wallace turns and throws has a man in the flat he's got the ball Vance Drone is down inside the 40, close to the 35-yard line. And on the tackle, Andre Hatcher, number 21. And Trone's a big guy, huh? Play-action pass going to the right. Got all the defense going to the wrong side of the field. Comes around and swings it back. That's another thing that Chuck Risen told me about, um, excuse me, Jim Shukart, about Ed Wallace. Live arm. But his one weakness may be his decision-making when he's making his passes. They go with the big pullback, Lazaro, across the right side. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Even though Something else that's got to be tough for Ed Wallace, and I list him at 5'8". Okay? you got the guys in the front line that are going 6'2", 6'1". you got another guy 5'11", 6'0". It's tough to see over those guys. You almost have to roll them out and hope that he can see through some of the pockets. You know, that's another thing that you like to do with your little quarterbacks is roll them out of the pocket. It gives, you know, uh, let the, the offensive line shift a little bit, but it gives them a better view of downfield. It's a second down and six, and a fumble picks it up. Wallace does and picks up a couple of yards. A little Very too quick. Excuse me, Craig. Very lucky man there. David Myers finally covered Wallace. And again, the ball bounces in the right direction for the team that has it. Wallace uh, took the snap. You see, he already had his legs turned. He was already going into the backfield before he ever had the ball. So one thing that you definitely want to be careful, you're moving the ball well at this point in the situation you want to be in. Don't goof it up with a turnover now. And we'll get one more playoff. They give it to the fullback, Lazaro. Again, we're going to be very close to a first down. We've come to the end of the first quarter. The score is orange, seven, brush, nothing. We'll come back. We'll tell you if brush got a first down, and we'll do all that after this. This infernal problem is consuming me. That's an ugly, dangerous business. There's something devilish in this one. Forgive me. It's poison. The <laughs> fine cold-blooded, deliberate murder. Murder most baffling, most dangerous. A huge, demonic harm. Murder to challenge the mind of a master. That's right. Put some mystery into Mondays. Sherlock Holmes. Monday on a &E. Back. Brush had a fourth down, less than a yard. They pick it up. The drive is alive. Wallace on the screen pass is caught by Incorsio on the near side. Only for a gain of a yard, it was more dramatic looking than it actually turned out to be uh, yardage-wise. But Brush will take it. Anything to the positive. Ball now inside the 20, Scott. And it was a big first down. It's a big first down because it keeps alive the drive that we talked about as they started it. Good field position, just what Coach Shukard wanted. They're keeping the ball on the ground. They're mixing up the pass with Wallace when necessary, and they're picking up big first downs along the way. Wallace keeps it and does a nice job of eluding two tackles, but is dropped from behind. Finally dropped by Matt Hershey. John Lehman also in there for Brush. There we got a little glimpse of uh, the athleticism that Coach Shukard mentioned about Ed Wallace. Uh, good live arm, good athletic ability. Again, as I mentioned briefly a second ago, one weakness he may have is his decision-making 
when he has to throw the ball. And you can see him there. Once he gets open, he tends to want to run a little bit more than pass. Hello, I can't hear anybody. But that's something that's going to work a little bit better as he uh, matures through the season. Third down at 13 now. Wallace to throw again, is looking for a torsio and just can't connect. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Fourth down and 13, and we'll probably see Bill Tipton on to attempt a field goal here. Or let's see, it's gonna probably be a 42 yarder. We may not see Tipton on. No, no, we will. Under 10 and a half to go. Rush needs to get something on, on this drive, get out of the uh, scoreless streak that they're in. Tipton, good, long leg, plenty of distance. It's good from 43 yards out. Bill Tipton hits the field goal 42 yards out, and Brush is on the scoreboard, and they trail it by a score of 7-3. to three. Plenty of leg. That'd have been good from 52. Very impressive. In high school ball, you don't always get to see a lot of place kickers with a lot of leg. Anything from about 30 yards and out, they don't even really try anymore. But it's great to see a young guy come out and, and uh, hammer away 42 yards. Browns could have used that last week. And Tipton will be set to kick off. Going back deep now for Orange. We will see Brian Fieri in the middle. DeMarlo Brown and Danell Shorteridge on either side. So 10.25 to go in the first half. It's Orange leading brush by a score of 7-3. to three. Tipton going to put the foot to it again, and a nice high deep kick. Wow, huh? Taken at the six by Fiari. Wow. And he is crushed down at the 20-yard line. Man, oh, man. Is that Chris Tipton on that? Did you get the number of that bus that I just ran him off? I believe it was number 22, Chris Tipton. But I'll tell you, this is, this is a big series for brush on defense. May have been Jamie Lampert too, one of the two. Towards the end of the sec uh, the end of Orange last touchdown drive, they started to play some better defense, and they've also proved now that they can move the ball. Now they have to slow them down to keep that good field position that they want. And it was Lampert that was a number of that train that went by number 48. They pitch it out to the near side to Hatcher, who slips and falls across the 20. Got to about the 23-yard line, so pick up a two or three. Had some blocking out in front, just couldn't keep his footing. These brand new lights here at Brush, looking good, huh? The lights were turned on, I think, for the first time about a week or so ago, and this is the first official night game with the new lights at uh, Corb Field, and wow, it's uh, halogen lights, I guess. It's a different kind of... Second down and eight. If we get a chance, we're going to show you that uh, kickoff returning. And what a hit. Ryzen going to put it up. Second down and eight. Near side, he has Ascari, who goes out of bounds at the 33, and that'll be good enough for a first down. What a great play action pass by Orange. The misdirection play. Here's a, here's a replay on that kickoff. That's a big time leg. That is a big time leg oh, yeah. there. Watch this hit. Bam. But getting back to the, the Ralph, play. Ralph Thomas was also there. Just run by Orange. Nice misdirection play. Play action pass going to the to the right side of the field. Lance Risen spins around on the pivot, comes back to the left side, and they get a nice little chunky yard as there to pick up the first down. I'll tell you what he does that's really good is he hides the ball very well because I have a trouble. He, he sticks it out where everybody can see, but you still don't know if he keeps it or not. This time he goes right up the middle to Hatcher again. And he is going to be dragged back. Maybe got a yard or so. Hans Drews. The man who made the initial hit for Brush. They do give him a yard on forward progress. Here's see Andre Hatcher, the junior. Orange doing ex exactly what Chuck Ryzen said they would do. Predominantly run the ball, but they want to complement it with nice, safe, solid passing routes. And that's how they've done it. They've been able to move the ball fairly well. Tony Gray and Mike Hammond check into the game for Orange. 
second down and 13. Hatcher again. And does a nice job of getting around the outside. Finally hit by Veronese. The initial contact was made by Dave Perlman coming up from his DB position. Orange running a lot of misdirection plays. Misdirection running uh, the players one direction coming back the other and doing a good job of it. And Brush not doing too bad playing defensively. Uh, they just need to be able to slow them down a little bit more at this point. Taking a look on the Brush sideline, quarterback Ed Wallace out of the training room. Uh, we understand he had the hamstring taped up a little bit, walking kind of gingerly on the sideline. And uh, I don't think I want a guy 5'8 sitting in the pocket. So we'll have to see how serious the injury is if his mobility is cut down. Right up the middle, they try to go again. That was Fiari. And Berenice again on the tackle. Matt Probst is also there. And that'll bring up a fourth down and two. And Lance Reislin is also the punter for this orange squad. So it's hard to tell what they're going to do this right now. This is a we'll big, see. big play. And they're going for it. For the brush defense. They hold them here. They're going to get that great field position that Jim Shukard wants. Now he's sitting back into the punt formation. Okay. Have to see what happens. Reislin. Gets off a nice end over end boot. Tipton going to take it at the 21 with only one blocker. But he takes great advantage of it. Great oh, hold. Still on his feet across the 30. Fumbled the football, and who's got it? And I think Brush is able to come up with it again. We've had three fumbles now, and all, all three times the team that has coughed it up has hung on. What an athletic move. Fumbles, real, fumbles really are no big deal as long as you can recover them yourself. <laughs> So let's take a great look, a good look at this block. I didn't quite get the number. I believe it was number 27. 27. Greg Williams, outstanding block, took on him. About four guys in front of him, but made the key block. The tip to need it to break that open. Great field position, their own 48. Ed Wallace is in with a full house backfield. So that means Carmichael's now in the game, and he gets the ball for maybe a yard. Sean Carmichael, number 81. You can't stress enough on that punt return. Tipton picked it up at about his 25-yard line. When I first looked, all I saw were about five orange, uh, white jerseys, actually. But Williams made the one key necessary block to spring that, and that's what it takes. Ed Wallace limping noticeably on the field right now. Dave Perlman comes into the game, and that will give Dom and Torcio a break, number 33. Craig, that, that block gave them an additional 15 yards to start off the series. Wallace to throw. He's got all kinds of receivers out there. He's going to keep it on the ground across the 50 and down close to the 46-yard line. Pickup of about four or five. And he got up all right. You see that uh, right hamstring heavily taped. I don't know if we'll get another look at this. Jason Baumgartner, number 81. A great block to give Wallace a few extra seconds of look downfield and also gave him a few extra yards of running room, allow him to pick up about five or six yards. Third down and four. It's Lazaro, Perlman, and Carmichael in the backfield. And Wallace pitches it back nicely to Perlman, and he is close to the first down. We'll have to see where they mark it. Wallace did a perfect job there, Scott. He waited right till he was about to get creamed and dished it off. And the orange defense shaded a little bit to the left side. Here we get a look at it. You see there's only one player, Fiari, chooses to go for the quarterback, which isn't so much the wrong decision to make. It just so happens that Wallace made the right decision at the right time. And Fiari's got to make that decision like he did and wait. This, the Calvary's got to come. They've got to come and bail him out, and they didn't. And that's a first down And for in Brush. defense of Fiari, that's a split-second decision on his part as well. Wallace to throw. Over the middle, he's got tipped in, and it's almost intercepted. Adam Lustig knocks it down. A little other foot, and that might have been right in the arms of Tipton. Well, as I said, I think I think you're right. Fiari did. He made the only play he could make, but you got to have those other Lions there. Oh, wow. Second down and 10 now. And again, the orange defense was shaded to the opposite side of the ball. When Brush ran it, they ran to the left. Orange was on its right, so... Again, that time Orange just happened to guess incorrectly. But there was a good chance to look at Wallace. For a little guy, he does. He throws the ball very well and very effortlessly. Second down and 10 now. 4.49 to go here in the first half. Wallace is going to keep it. And he's going to go down. 
Matt Hershey again on the tackle. Good open field tackle. No gain on the play. David Perlmuter did a good job of staying with the uh, with the, the tailback. So we'll see if we get a, get a look at it. Number one, Perlmuter coming in. There you see him. He stays with it, but he gets good help from number, is that number 80, Matt Hershey. So that's the way that you have to run. Like you mentioned before, if one man commits to the running back or to the quarterback, you have to have your teammates come in and pick up the other side. Third down, we'll still call it 10. About nine and three quarters. Wallace being chased. He throws and it's incomplete and we're going to have intentional grounding. Watch out. And Ed Wallace does not want to get into it with David well, Myers, who's David about Myers. three feet taller than he is. Don't get him for intentional grounding, so it's as good as a sack. Well, not, not a leave here. A forward pass right here. I think Jim Shukart was upset that nobody saw the extracurriculars that were going on, and his man Wallace outweighed probably by 100 pounds. Don't want him getting into with a defensive lineman. I think uh, Myers had an opportunity to get Wallace. Wallace had been so elusive tonight, nobody's really been able to get a handle on him. He did get a handle on him and wanted to make sure that uh, he did some damage. He may not get another chance tonight. So we've got a fourth down and, oh, good 20 or so, maybe 19. And we will see Bill Tipton in the punt going back deep for Orange. It's supposed to be Fiari and Schaefer, but it's not. Tipton with a nice high punt. And it is Fiari, and he fumbles the football, and Brush has recovered it. Nathan Weisenberg is Johnny on the spot, and Brush gets the turnover. Well, I guess when you have that many fumbles, one of them's got to be a turnover, and it just so happened this time. And you know, Craig, it's easy for me to say this now, but you can see how high and short the ball is. He was too far back. He took too long to come up, and besides, he tried to catch it with open palms. you gotta get, you got to hustle up, get under the ball, catch it in a little bit better position with your body as well. So first down and 10, now the ball on the 30. They give it to the fullback, Lazaro. Lazaro. So Lazaro picks up a couple of yards. Brush. Close to the 25-yard line. Brush really needs to take advantage of this. They started out at their own 48 last drive. Started to move the ball, but then started to go backwards. Now with that fumble, they've got outstanding field position. And they've proven that they can move the ball forward. Now they got to come away with... They don't want three this time. I think they really need to, to uh, get some confidence in the offense to come away with seven. Wallace going to keep it. Nice fake. Down to the 25-yard line. Nicely done there, huh? Kermuter, number one on orange, initially went for the fake, but had a nice... Ability, had the good ability to come back and, uh, and cover up for his mistake and still be in on the tackle. Here so we're going to look at it. Number one at the bottom of your screen. See, he gets beaten, but he comes back and helps out on the tackle. Good hustle. hustle. Way to keep your head in the ball game. Matt Hershey made the initial contact. Third down and five now for Brush, and they, they may be in Bill Tipton's field goal range. <laughs> Up the middle they go. It's Lazaro, and that's a first down. Now they're in Tipton's range for sure. <laughs> but as I mentioned, it's, it's fine to come away with the field goal, but this team hasn't scored a touchdown yet. they got to put one on soon. To, and again, it's going to be such a boost knowing that the team can take it 50, 60 yards and put it in the end zone. Orange takes timeout number two. And let's uh, thank those sponsors, huh? Geppetto's Pizza and Ribs, the first place in taste. Great pizza, great ribs. Helping us out here week in and week out on the game of the week. Give them a call, 691-1000. And across the street, Warehouse Beverage, 382-2400 for all your beverage needs. And the lottery's back, by the way. I saw it on the sign the other day. Let me thank my notice, Trophies and Awards. They are on South Green Road at Mayfield. Give them a call, 291-3210. They will help you out with all of your trophies and award needs. And they will be awarding the Cablevision Minota's Player of the Game Award following this game, one to each side. And uh, Greg Minota stopped up uh, tonight to say that he watched the broadcast last week, an exciting game, and very happy to be a part of the game of the week. And again, we said we were... We've always wanted to do this, and he stepped forward and has made it possible, and some beautiful-looking trophies, or I should say plaques. 
that the uh, gentlemen are receiving this year, and we thank him very much. He, he even agreed on, on our choices last week, so we're one for one. <laughs> That's the difficult part. The easy part's giving them away. The difficult part's choosing who to give them to. A lot of deserving kids every week. The ball's just outside the 15-yard line, a first down and 10 for the Arcs. Up the middle they go again to Lazaro. Inside the 10. Half the battle, Scott, here, besides the fact that Brush is picking up first downs, is that Lance, Lance Reisland and Brian Fiari and company are not on the field. So you're not giving up any points. It is, and you know, I talked to Lance Reisland earlier in the week, and he felt really good about the team. He liked what they did last week. He felt comfortable. The team uh, much closer this year, and he looked for big things from Orange this season. Second down and four. Up the middle they go again, Lazaro. Close to the five, so that means close to a first down. I also want to give credit on the last run to uh, Jason Baumgartner, another good lead block, number 81. So we want to keep an eye on him throughout uh, the rest of this ballgame, open up some nice big holes thus far. Well, usually this is my strength here, but I'd say, well, what an angle we've got here. They're going to measure. And I'm going to say that, oh boy, first, tough of an first, tough Come on, first prediction of the oh, year. Oh, there, don't, he didn't get it. Don't, don't even look. Don't look at the, the monitor. You've got to tell me from up front there. I can't see. Oh, he told you he didn't no, get it. No, you didn't say a word. No, <laughs> it's not on the record. No way. No way. I think I was about 3 of 3 last year. I just had to see where the, it's such a. You cheat. You have to look in the monitor. I didn't see where they spotted it. They were just running the chains in. The ball now is spotted just on the six yard line, third down and inches. Brush continues to go with the full house backfield. The fullback again, Lazaro, and it's a touchdown. Number Bold 81, Baumgartner again, right up there, leading the way. Bold his way into the end zone from six yards out. Let's watch it again. Let's watch that block Scotty was talking about. Look at number 81 leading the way all the way through. Well, he's blocking his own people. He's so happy about putting the pads. Not Chris Chris Sicardi three yards deep into the end zone. Matt Prost into attempt the extra point, and it's good. So with 147 to go, Brush has scored directly led by that uh, turnover and it is 10 to 7 and don't forget coming up this Wednesday night at 930 it's the Cablevision sports page we'll have highlights of this one have highlights of the West Side game where Kenny Rhoda my partner in crime and the sports page will be there and the uh, sports page cameras will be out and about this weekend. If it's if it's Friday night and you're watching this game and you happen to be stumbling around some of the games tomorrow, am I allowed to tell where we're going to be, Care? We're going to be at Richmond Heights tomorrow to look at those Spartans as they play Lowellville. We all, we'll all be there. We'll all be there. <laughs> Carrie will be there. Craig will be there. Scott, Scott will be there. Be there. Oh, another Scott will be there. The Both other, Scotts. We'll, we'll all be there. The whole Cablevision family. Steve's oh, not Steve's going. Steve's not going. I was going to say the okay. whole Cablevision family, but I guess not. <laughs> but we'll Steve's be out there tomorrow. <laughs> Steve's got to be the black sheep. Probably just going to stay home, watch TV. Tipton to kick it off. D back down to the one. How about that? And it's Fiari. And he is hit across the 20 to the 21-yard line. This Tipton has got a big league leg. I tell you what, Chris Tipton missed that block, though. Number 22 had an opportunity to pull him down maybe 10 yards shorter. Let's see if we get a look at it here. Watch number 22 in the brown as he makes a hit, but he can't bring him down. Watch for 22 at the bottom of your screen. Right there. Had him at about the 15-yard line, just plain missed the tackle. First down and 10 for Orange. Straight up the middle they go. I think that was the fullback, Ascari. That's who it was. We're down a minute and 10 to go. So the one minute and 10 second offense is it now in for Orange. They'll try to get something back here. They trail it 10 to 7. Orange cost themselves some points on a big turnover. Nicely thrown ball by Reisland on the far side. Jason Merchant has it and can't get out of bounds. It's good enough for a first down. 
That's a nice pattern by Orange, but they have to be careful. With Tipton's leg, you don't want to go giving up a turnover at this point with this much time at this part of the field because Tipton's proven he can knock it in from 40 yards plus. Nickelback is in now for Rush, Chris Tipton, as Will Ferristein takes a seat, trying to protect the big pass, and Fiari is going to run the ball close to a first down, gain of about seven, actually. We're down to 35 seconds to go, and Orange is going to take timeout number three, and Lance Rison will go take a timeout and find out, are we going to go for this with 34 seconds to go, or are we just going to sit on it and get in the locker room and go from there? And he gets to go ask Dad. Yeah. Hey, Dad. He doesn't say coach. I don't know if you, if you got a chance to see the uh, interview before the game. You were talking to Jim. I asked Chuck what it was like to coach his son. He said, well, I don't really coach him. Really give him to another guy to coach him. <laughs> That's tough. That's got to be tough. I, I tell you, the, the toughest part about it, Kerry would know. He's got the, the Sparky uh, Sparky Polachek. <laughs> Sparky Polachek. <laughs> Big baseball coach, man. <laughs> I tell you the thing that's tough about coaching somebody. It's, it's, I coached my brother for four years when he was at Kirtland in baseball. When you play him, people are always saying, well, they're playing because it's the coach's brother or the coach's son. If he's not playing, say, oh, you're so tough on your kid because he's your kid, you're being extra. It's a no-win situation. I don't think Chuck Risen has this problem. And I don't uh, think he cares, actually. <laughs> well, Lance, Lance has proven he's a big-time quarterback. He showed us last year. And you have to put your best player out no matter what his last name is. Second down and three. Risen to throw. Short hops it into Mike Hammond. And that will bring up a third down. Still three to go, down to 31 seconds to go. That's another safe route, but uh, Lance rushed that one. He had another second or two to plant his feet, make a better throw to get the receiver out of bounds. And uh, a little sidelight to this one, Jim Shukart. Uh, his daughter marches in the brush or in the orange marching band. How about that? Risland to throw. Off the back leg, a nice Bang. toss, and oh. it's almost picked off. Bill Tipton stepped up right in front of Jason Merchant and almost picked it off, and that would have been six. And it goes back to what I said. Doesn't matter what the score is. Orange has proven that they can move the ball. They're only down by three points. You don't want to make a mistake here in midfield with only 25 seconds, but still, it gives you enough time to get in Bill Tipton's field goal range. It's not You don't want to give away any more points at this time. It's so a fourth down and three, and it appears as though Orange is going to go for it. Again, it's tough to call right now with Lance Reisland, also the punter. And they may be going, huh? Yep, he's going to go. Actually, he's going to go down. Tripped up from behind by number 85, Hans Drews. And Brush gets the ball back, and the ball and is on the 38. position. The only thing against them right now is time. And Coach Reisland hoping that... Uh, this wasn't a mistake. I tell you, let's watch and see if Rush doesn't run some play action, some rollouts to get Wallace out into the flats, open the field up a little bit, and let him show that arm of his. If they can pick up a good 15, 20 yards in 22 seconds, plus they've got a couple of timeouts left. All three? Yeah, they've I don't, got I don't have them taking a timeout. If yet. they've got all three of their timeouts left, run a couple of safe intermediate pass routes to the wings, to the sidelines, to stop the clock or to call their timeouts, that's going to give uh, Bill Tipton a good shot at uh, at a field goal, and he's already shown us tonight he can hit it from 42. They may have taken one now, Scott, as time has stopped on the field with 22 seconds to go. And uh, Well, again, you're talking at the 37. You've got two timeouts, and if you roll your quarterback, which they have been doing with Wallace thus far, he hasn't been sitting in the pocket. He's got the good arm, good mobility, maybe break something down. You know, it's not going to be too far-fetched to see Brush maybe come away with at least a field goal attempt. And uh, Chuck Reisland putting it in the hands of the defense, saying, come on, guys, we need you to stiffen up one more time here before the half and don't let them get into that field goal range. Hey, battle of wits, that's what football's all about. Wallace to throw. Everybody coming. And it's picked off. Look out. Not too many people in front of Adam Lustig and he finally gets hauled out of bounds and finally dragged down by Boy, Dan Lazaro. If that doesn't throw a monkey wrench in what I said, he stayed in the pocket, but give the Orange defense a lot of credit. They, they, they broke the line of scrimmage. They've got, here's a look at it. Great penetration. Look at that. Five, four offense, uh, Orange defensive players. 
It made Wallace rush his throw, stayed in the pocket. And like you said, when we talked about a small guy coming in at about 5'7", 5'8", he just couldn't see anything. And they're bringing it back. Oh, they say he stepped out of bounds, I think, over here. Is that what they're saying? What are they saying? Clipping on the return. Ah. That's why it was such a nice return. First down white. All right, but it, it, at any rate, white. Orange gets the ball back. They dodge a bullet. And the, the, it pays off the strategy of Chuck Risen. Again, Wallace's arm strength on that last pass just was not there. Uh, he, had to, he had to rush it, though. Again, Orange had four or five white jerseys in his face. And again, for a little guy, the saying is, you can't throw from your back, and he was almost on it. And Risen going to kneel down on the ball, not take any chances. And it looks like we'll go to the locker room for the 10-7 score. Very exciting first half so far. Rush trailed as... Brian Fiari went in from six yards out with 1.45 to go in the opening quarter to make it 7-0. Then with 10.45 to go, or 10.25 to go in the second period, Bill Tipton, 42-yard field goal, made it a score of 7-3. And then with 1.47 to go in the second quarter, six-yard six yard touchdown run by Lazaro, and that's where we stand, 10-7. We'll come back, we'll have the marching bands and the stats, and we'll do all that after you watch this. Charlie 1 6, this is Hotel 1 6. Your mission is to delay the tank platoon in the vicinity of 5484. In the Army National Guard, we can teach you to drive a tank. We can also teach you to stop a tank. The Army National Guard, Americans at their best. Yes. We're back and down on the yeah. field, the Orange Lion Marching Band.
this seat because I'm interested in the here and now and the future, my future. That's why I joined the Army National Guard. Today's Guard is an Army ready to respond, an Army coordinated to advance its skills beyond the here and now. There may be easier ways to spend a couple days a month, a few weeks a year, but none of them will move you into the 21st century like the Army Guard. If you're interested in your future, here and now, call this number. Welcome back. It's 10 to 7. We're at halftime. I'm Craig Dees along with Scott Zarilla from Corb Field, the uh, home of the Brush Arks, and the Arks lead the Orange Lions by a score of 10 to 7. And let's get to those halftime stats courtesy of, of John Bezda, who's been here as long as I've been here and does a great job with the stats and pretty even. Pretty even as you go down, six first downs. Both uh, rushed about 21 times, which really isn't much of a surprise. Both coaches said they stressed the running game. Uh, five attempts for both teams. The yardage a little bit different, but really uh, not much of a factor. Total yardage really not much of a factor because Brush, again, did what they said they wanted to do, and they started with good field position. So granted, they only came away with 10 points, but it's going to be misleading when you see only 71 total yards, considering they've got 10, uh, 10 points. And the turnovers are even, but the big turnover by Orange on the muffed uh, punt led to the brush touchdown to make it 10 to 7. Orange will get the ball back here to start the second half. Well, Craig, you know, I also I, I said in just earlier that it doesn't matter if you fumble the ball as long as you recover it yourself. Well, there's a classic example of the first turnover was a big one and good field position and Brush took advantage of it. And that's another thing, it's, it's one thing to turn, you can turn over five times, and yes, it takes away from your scoring opportunities, but as long as it doesn't hurt you, sometimes it's not so bad. Brush took advantage of it, and that's the big thing. And the, the turnover that Orange was able to get from Brush, just not enough time on the clock, plus it ended up being a big penalty that marched them all the way back, but they, they were in field goal range after the first uh, turnover as well. Well, they were, and you know, I tell you, when, when Orange had the ball and they went out on four plays and gave Brush a good field position, I, 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 I have to question uh, Chuck Reisland's theory of not punting the ball away. Again, because again, with Tipton's good leg, and they, they didn't get the first down, giving them such good field position. They got away with, uh, again, the, the turnover. But I don't know. I think, in, in retrospect, he may want to take that back. Yeah, it's a tough call when you're at that part of the field. Sure. And there, there's that little time left. Right. You're thinking, right. you know, the defense didn't play that badly. No, not and at all. I'm asking this for 20-some seconds. It ended up being uh, uh, okay for them. But again, when you've got a guy like Tipton, with, I mean, he kicked a 42-yarder. You're Easily. only talking. Yeah, you're only talking <laughs> another... 10 to 15 yards to get him in that range again. Um, I, I personally, I just question it. There's the uh, officials talking to uh, some of the brush art coaches. Oh, I, I know one thing I wanted to say before I didn't get the chance. Can't have, uh, I missed it last week. You probably touched on it. What beautiful weather. We, we can't have a telecast without touching on the weather. I tell you what, tonight, is, tonight last week was an oven, but this week is almost ideal. At least right now it is. Right. It's probably in the, in the mid-60s, if that, maybe 60 degrees. Not cold enough where uh, the cramps are going to start hitting, but uh, just very comfortable weather. And uh, We would love to have this week in and week out, just and like we of love, love to have Geppetto's Pizza, Pizza and Ribs week in and week out. 691-1000 and run across the street to get your beverage needs at Warehouse Beverage 382-2400 they're right next door to each other so if you stop by one go to the other and also Minota's Trophies and Awards they will be uh, providing us with the beautiful plaques that we got a good look at last week to the players of the game one from each squad so good luck this week huh? give them a you know, <laughs> give them a call for your uh, trophy and award needs that number is 291-3210 and Greg Minota also helps out here at Brush one of the football or one of the basketball coaches and he's here in attendance tonight came yeah. up to say hello and, and we had a nice little basketball conversation during halftime my this kind of almost, guy. You know, that's almost sacrilegious at this part of the year. Number one. For you, not for me. Number one, baseball's not even done yet. Well, you're talking pro football. Were you talking is, baseball who? <laughs> well, you're talking the Indians or you're talking, no, you know, did I say Pittsburgh, that? I Toronto, said, Minnesota, exactly. and Atlanta. If you want to talk that, we'll find. Bill Tipton will kick off for a brush. He of strong leg. 
And going back deep for Orange should be Fiari, DeMarlo Brown, and Danell Shorteridge. I want to thank John Bezdek once again for his statistics here at the half. I've been spoiled. When I first started here, I was the stat man now. <laughs> the uh, the gentlemen at all the schools we visit are always kind enough to supply us with those. And well, they saw the kind of stats you kept. <laughs> and they thought, geez, we better help this guy out. We are set for the second half of football. Orange will get the ball. They moved the ball fairly well in the first half. See if they can get a drive going here and brush with the lead for the first time all season. Up 10 to 7, and Tipton with a nice long boot. Right up the middle, it's Fiari at the 10. And he is close to the 30 yard line before he's tripped up. Number 83. Mike Bianchi incidentally, on the tackle. Excuse me, Greg. Incidentally, Orange did win the coin flip at the beginning and chose to defer to the second half, so turned out turned out to be the right decision, trailing by three points. There's a good look at the uh, Cablevision Minotis Trophy and Award Player of the Game plaque that we'll give away to one player from each squad tonight. Reisland hands the ball straight up the middle as Ascari, the fullback. They start out with Ari Ascari in the backfield and Andre Hatcher at the tailback. Matt Hershey plays tight end. Tony Gray, you'll see Tony Gray, Mike Hammond, Danell Shorteridge, Jason Merchant, Justin Gross, among others, playing the wideouts. Now Lance Reisland put together pretty well quarterback-wise, but the success so far for Orange has been running the football and just putting his passes in between there kind of keep people off pace and that's the direction they appear to be going here in the second half second down six Risland to put it up this time has a man that's Hatcher that's a first down and he's out of bounds Dom and Torcio on the tackle and a flag comes up flying in I think may have been a towel falling off of somebody but it's tough when you've got the brown and yellow out there and the yellow flags fly but I think we've got a personal foul a little uh, overzealous on the tackle We'll see what happens. Personal foul over here. Mm. Nice break for Orange. They'll pick up 15 more. And Craig, going back to what you mentioned about how Orange is just kind of complimenting the run with the pass, and they're good passes. They're good percentage passes. Ryzen's taking a few steps out of the pocket one way or the other, and he's only throwing the intermediate maybe 7 to 12 yarders, which is good. They're not dangerous. They're not risky. Uh, you see a good example right there. He only threw the ball 6, 7 yards. And uh, excluding the penalty, came away with a nice little gain. And again, as you mentioned, keeps the defense off balance. The ball is on the 40-yard line of Brush. It's a first down and 10 for the Orange Lions. The first possession of the second half. And Reisland hands the ball again up the middle. This time it's Fiari. And he'll pick up a couple of yards. Gain of two yards on the play. Coming up it'll be second down and eight. Orange would love to get in here somehow. Get a, at least a field goal or a touchdown to get themselves back on track. The momentum really swung over to Brush after that muff punt reception. Well, they moved the ball fairly well in the first half. He only came away with seven points, though. Reisland fakes it, looking downfield. He's got Hershey wide open. Puts it right in his hands, and he's out of bounds inside the 20. Boy, Hershey may as well have had flags on the end of his hand. He was wide open. And that goes back when we get another look on the replay. I'm sure we will. A great play action pass by Reisland. Look at this. Takes his time, puts it in, pulls it back. Andre Hatcher also doing his job by taking the fake. I mean, he didn't go through it so-so. Uh, he really went through the motion of taking the ball, and he proceeded to run like he had it. That froze the defense. Greg Williams on the tackle. First down and 10 now. Ball is inside the 15. Up the middle, they go to Hatcher to the 5, and fumbled the football, but I think they're going to whistle it dead that the ground caused the fumble at about the one-yard line. Hatcher, excuse me, Craig. What we talked about, Reisland, the fact that he makes no bones about showing you the football. He's not a sleight of hand artist. Watch the great ball. Uh, he just missed the cut by Hatcher. I wanted to get to it. Nice camera shot down there. But Hatcher made a great one-on-one -on -one move as he started to shift to his left, put his foot down, 
cut right back up the middle, almost came away with the touchdown. And what are they at, about the two yard line? One yard line. It is a first and goal from the one. Orange knocking on the door. Reislin goes in for the touchdown from one yard out, burrowing right behind. John Lehman, the center, Justin Weiss, the left guard, sneaks in there and picks up the touchdown. And now it is a 13 to 10 game and two minutes and 20 seconds in to the second half. Orange marches the ball right down the field for the score. Very nice drive. Very impressive drive and it goes back to what you said. They needed to come down and do it to get their offense back in. We touched it. They moved well in the first half. Only came away with seven. This was a good drive and they capped it off with a touchdown. Exactly what you need to do. Control the offense. Ryan Novak in to attempt the point after. Another man with a strong leg and puts it through. So at 9.40 to go it is 14 to 10. The uh, Orange Lions lead the Brush Arts, and now it's time for Brush to see if they can come back. There was a good example. Coach Chuck Reisland told me during the week, I asked him some of his strengths on offense, and one of them was a good offensive line. They showed it. We've talked, we talk every week, and I'm sure we'll say it again in the future. You have to control the line of scrimmage. From either side of the ball, whatever team you are, and Orange took complete control of the tempo. They were helped along by the 15-yard uh, roughing, or uh, what was the, oh, was the uh, personal foul? Personal foul, thank you. To give them a little bit of a boost, but other than that, they moved the ball well on their own, on the ground. 9.40 to go. We're in the third quarter. A lot of time left and a beautiful night. Glad to be back on the air again. Our ninth season of award-winning football. We don't just say that we win. We actually do win awards. We're very happy to be back. And, of course, the sports page debuted last week to rave reviews, I might add. Not to blow our own horn or anything, but really the only show in the area that talks about high school sports. And as the weeks progress, we got a lot of changes coming up in the show. It's going to expand, hopefully, time-wise, give us a little bit more time to talk with you. There you see the nice leg of Novak fumbled on the two-yard line, finally picked up and dropped. Matt Santorelli just couldn't get a handle on it, and that is big-time trouble for Brush. Is there all the way back to the three-yard line. Before you started to talk about the sports page, I wanted to, to touch on the fact that this is a big possession for Brush. Trying to get half decent field position, it's going to be a big drive uh, situation for them as we see the flag down on the field. It's sitting at about the 50-yard line or the 49-yard line. We'll have to see what this is all about. Brush may get lucky, and maybe it's an offside. But what I'm curious to Kick, see... Kickoff? Well, the kickoff's in the air. There's a clip by the receiving team. By the receiving team. Loose ball. Loose ball foul. Right. All right, here we go. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> Let's see if they can... Well, the worst that can happen... Oh, no, yeah, they got a choice. Right. Half the White distance captain. to the goal. We've got a clipping penalty. Clipping penalty. No, no. <laughs> clipping against Brush. Clipping against Brush. All right, now, you can kick off over. Who's, are you the spokesman here? You can kick off on their 45-yard line, or you can give them the ball right here at the four. Right, so something tells me they're going to take the ball on the four. I don't, I don't know about you. On brush. You're fine. Ball's at the four-yard line. Boy. <laughs> Great camera work and, and way to mic the official. That's outstanding. Bill Schneider. Uh, you get right down on the field with, with cable vision. He has been an official in the area for a long time. Former baseball coach at Willoughby South. Matter of fact, his son, you saw his son, B.J. Schneider, on the game of the week last year from Willoughby South. How about Willoughby South last week? I know they're not in the viewing area, but they lost like a gazillion games in a row, it seemed like. And very impressive victory last week over Geneva. Going for two in a row tonight. Well, Brush has it on the four-yard line. First down and ten behind quarterback Ed Wallace. Again, the full house field. They give it to the fullback, Lazaro. Before the kickoff, I was going to say that this would be a, another big possession for Brush, seeing as Orange came right out of the gate, scored a touchdown. How will they respond to that? Uh, that's going to be That would be hard enough as it is, but now when you're pushed all the way back to your own yard line. Uh, we, we talked at length. 
at the first half that they don't want to have to go the full length of the field. So they, they're really uh, in double trouble at this point. And Torcio, Carmichael, and Lazaro in the backfield, and a flag flies, and we may have some movement on the line. I believe it was big Vance Trone. And the official pointing at him. Who was moving. Oh, oh. Dead ball foul. False start, 75. Oh, 75. Check that. Frank Young. Who is Young? He's only a sophomore. Yeah, the worst part, though, when you're in this situation is not so much the, even the thought of scoring. It's even if you have to punt the ball, you're giving the other team great field position. If you could at least get it to the 30 or 40 and make some field position up by the, uh, you know, turning the ball over. But here, there's a no-win situation unless you pick up a half a dozen first downs. There's a big hole for Lazaro, and he is across the five, close to the eight-yard line. So that'll bring up a third down and long. Will Furstein with a nice lead block. Well, you're so right, Craig. Uh, even if they, you know, you really don't expect them realistically to go 96 yards. But as you mentioned, get out to your own 30, 35, 40. Tipton's proven he's got a great leg for punts and kickoffs. You can, you can, if you can come out that far, at least you're not giving Orange the ball at the 50-yard line. Wallace to put it up and going to come up short. That was intended for Trone, but again, he was chased for his life. And again, it was Justin Weiss right in his face, and Wallace went down. And now it's a dangerous situation for Brush. They've at least got to get the kick off here. Cannot afford to have it blocked. Well, Orange sent everybody plus the kitchen sink now down what? the chute and uh, put a lot of pressure on Wallace. He had to rush his throw. Twice we've seen when the pressure's on, he's rushing his throw. He just isn't effective. And it's hard to tell when he's backpedaling if you can actually throw off that bad leg or the back leg because it is uh, bandaged up. Tipton gets it off high. Fair catch called for and taken by Mike Hammond and Orange with great field position. Something that we talked about this week was the fact that Brush had the, the rough game last week against Solon 35 to nothing. And in talking to the coaches this week, saying, you know, Brush is not... They're not a team that should be getting beat 35 to nothing. It just got to be one of those things where things started going bad and it snowballed and you look around and you just he's just gone. You got to be wondering what they're thinking right now because things are not going well at this point. They've got to have a big defensive series here. Hatcher dropped from behind the line of scrimmage. Nicely done. Defensive back. Check that Lyman. Hands Drews. And also, Dom and Torcio. Who's another guy who's been all over the place? Aren't you going to buy me a candy bar? They're selling candy bars down there, Scott. And we've got uh, a new defensive back in for Brush, number 48. Jamie Lamperth. <coughs> Second down and 12. Risen going to put it up. Good coverage downfield by Brush. And it's kicked off. Matt Props was the man who picked it off. Stepped right up, and I said there was good coverage. Everybody was covered downfield. Risland trying to thread the needle and couldn't do it. Now Brush, a lot better than the four-yard line. Two points, Greg. A, watch Risland. He does force it in. Props has good coverage. Ill-advised throw. Great coverage, great defense. And also, Brush beat me to the point. You had mentioned that how does Brush feel now that they gave up the good field position. But the defense can come back and give them a lift. If they can hold Orange, that can give the offense more confidence. And sure enough, they come away with the turnover and uh, gives them new life. Dan Lazaro on the carry. Picks up five or six on the play. See, and again, even if Brush doesn't score this time, the field possession, the field position has, has turned. And for Orange, they can't, they've got the lead. They're winning by four. They've got to just relax and, and put it in the hands of that defense. And we've got a timeout. What's going on? It's an official's timeout. Well, you know, Craig, I'll, I'll tell you, granted, there's 24 points on the board, but I I still think that, and I think you'll agree, both teams have played well defensively. Yeah. It's not like they're running up and down the field, you know, uh, Houston Oilers scoring every time they touch the ball. But, you know, pretty solid defense. Both teams are, are putting together uh, good drives every couple of possessions. Sean Carmichael fixes the helmet. We're back in action. Second down and five. Up the middle they go again to Lazaro. And he pulls his way across the 35. Picks up a yard or so. They're going with the full house backfield. Carmichael wears 81. 
Dan Lazaro wears 34, and Dom and Torcio wears 33. That's the way they're going. Dave Perlman, looking on the sidelines for Perlman. He is on the sidelines, so he's healthy and ready to go. Well, the defense did a good job. Now it's up to the offense to try to come away with one, maybe two first downs, as you mentioned. Get some half-decent decent field goal percentage. And a flag comes up flying as Lazaro picks up the first down. I don't know if we got a, from that position, if we got a face mask. It may be. If we get a replay, watch number 63, Brent Swalski. Nice block, opens the hole. You want, you want Jack 15 on, right? Face mask against Orange, and now a big 15-yard penalty toward the arcs. Nice legs on that official, huh? Face mask. I didn't know. the defense. First down. Here comes the replay. There you see the face mask right there. You just missed the block, but let's give credit to uh, Brent Swalski. Nice lead block to open that hole. David Myers, the man charged with the face mask, and I believe Orange is taking a timeout. Very impressive, the brush arcs right here. They had their backs against the wall, had to give it up. Tipton, incidentally, had a nice punt. You know, yeah. he could have done much worse than he did. Came away with the turnover on the defense to stop Orange, and now they've come back. And again, I think the defensive hole that they came up with has given the offense a lift, and now they're moving the ball. Whether they come away with the points or not, if they do have to give the ball up, at least Orange isn't on their 35-yard line. So there's 5.33 to go in the third quarter. Orange hoping for a big defensive effort here. And how about, we didn't, I don't even know if we got into this. As you'll see our proud sponsors come flying by. One of the assistant coaches on the Orange Lions is Cliff Faust. Right, who is the we, head we coach at university school for, for years. Now he's the, I think he's the defensive coordinator over here. There's a look at Geppetto's, 691-1000. Warehouse beverage. 382-2400 and Minotis Trophies and Awards 291-3210 we're very happy that all three have continued to be our sponsors we appreciate it and they do a good job for us every week Lazaro across the 40 down to the 37 yard line coming up in the fourth quarter we'll give you the phone numbers again and the address if you want to get in touch with us when it comes to the sports page we've got some phone numbers we'd like you to call to give us some stats on your team so that we can have a more complete scoreboard portion of our show in the weeks to come and you know something else Craig I know we've been talking about a sports ta page type of show for the past few seasons and it's great to finally get it on the air there's a lot of schools and a lot of uh, sports that just don't get the coverage and the credit that they deserve boy Lazaro again just pulling his way down to the 30 and that should be another first down tell you what he's got some strong legs and he is running people over as Matt Hershey just found out who scrapes himself off the deck so the momentum has swung once again got offsides on the defense I believe I should I should uh, preface what we were just saying about the, the telephone calls before all the mothers and fathers start calling up encroachment watch my son watch my son we're looking for uh, dead ball foul encroachment defense David Still Myers, first down and little, five first and five a little quick we're looking for the uh, athletic directors the coaches any of the statisticians and people like that to give us the phone call so if you're out there watching and you fit into that category uh, there's the number. We'll flash it again in the fourth quarter before it's all said and done. First and five. Lazaro that time slips and falls. Still picks up a yard or so. Credit to tackle to David Myers. There's another guy we've heard a lot about. Good and bad. Yeah. Well, we are uh, getting real close to Bill Tipton field goal range. Just under four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Uh, brush really eat up a lot of this third quarter and doing it with what they with what they want to do and just keeping it on the ground second and four guess who Lazaro again inside the 20 drags Matt Hershey along for another ride and that's another first down Jim Shukar said he likes to run run attack offensively I think we may have seen as we see the replay not 
completely the end of the pass, but they haven't had a lot of success when they are into the pass. Orange has been able to get pressure on Wallace, and they're really showing what they can do on the ground. Carmichael inside the 15, and he is hit and hit hard. Andre Hatcher made the initial contact. I was just about to say how well Carmichael has done as that lead blocker, picking off those linebackers coming through the hole, and that time they decided to run him deep and let him carry the football. He's done a great job lead blocking, and again, uh, we never give enough credit to lead blockers. We never give enough credit to the offensive linemen, but Lazaro's not going to get a lot of yardage without blocking. Lazaro again, that time he was hit by Fiari. And that's oh. a class, excuse me, Craig, that's a classic example. You can look right down there now. There are no brown jerseys in front of him. No blockers. He's not going to get a lot of yardage. Big play coming up here now for the Orange Lion defense. Time to stiffen up. The ball is on the 13-yard line. Third down and looks, scoreboard's got four. Looks more like five, five and a half. If you're a Brush fan, in my opinion, I don't think you want to see Brush throw the ball. I think you're in good field position. I think you want to go with another run play because at the least you're coming away with the field goal. I don't think you want to turn the ball over right now. It's Lazaro, but a nice hole. Close to another first down. Boy, from our vantage point here, you can really see that hole open up. And the thing is, you've got to have the guys that can hit the holes. The holes could be there, but if they don't read it properly, watch this again. There was the hole. Good for three or four. Vance Strong with a fine block. Eight yard. Is that a first down? I don't want to blow my own horn, but I'm going to. I don't always make the right call. And I did that time. <laughs> Ball is on the eight now. First down and goal. Or is just trying to keep him out of the end zone. Definite, definite scoring possibility here for Brush. But they got to keep him out of the end zone here. And it's Lazaro again, and a nice job that time by the Orange defense, leading away Justin Sanford, number 45. Andre Hatcher also there. The defensive backs for uh, Orange are really doing a nice job of coming up and meeting the run. I mean, they're almost overplaying the run now. Well, there you get a good look at it. I tell you, obviously, when the, when the field gets shortened, that brings everybody up and obviously makes things a little bit more difficult to run. And a whistle, and the oh, second down and seven call will be stopped. Not delay of game. False start. Not the time to make mistakes and shoot yourself in the foot. At very least, they're going to come away with a, uh, a good field goal, a temp barring turnover. But you're down at the five-yard line with the first down, and... You just don't want those mental mistakes now. And that's what it was exactly was, a mental mistake. Gives the Lion defense a little bit of breathing room here. You just wonder, you know the run's coming, the run's, you just wonder when we're going to see that little play action maybe dumped to the tight end, if it'll happen at all. Wallace going to run the option. Pitches it back very nicely to Perlman, and he's down inside the five to about the three-yard line. Perlmuter with a touchdown-saving tackle runs him down from his defensive back position. So we get the, get the replay. Watch number one, Perlmuter, coming out of nowhere. Okay, maybe we won't see what, it. Wallace got some guts, though, when he runs this option. And he's, he's taking big hits every yes, time, being either keeping the ball or giving it up. Third and goal, up the middle they go. And not a touchdown, down to about the one yard line. I believe that that was Lazaro again. Ed Wallace jumping up and down with his hands in the air thinking it's a touchdown. Now what do you do, coach? It's fourth down and less than a yard or close to a yard. It's less than a yard. It's inches. What are we doing? The way they're moving the ball, you go right off tackle with uh, Lazaro. Let's take a time. <laughs> Shukard wants to talk about it, but I'll bet you that's what he's going to do. He's not going to play action pass now. I think he's going to go to the big man, Lazaro, who's brought, who's carried the ball probably 60 to 70% of this drive. This is, the, this is the toughest part of the game right here. When you look down at fourth and six or third and five, and you, you, know, you try to make the right call, now... The way Tipton's been kicking the ball. Matter of fact, he, we may even see Matt props by by this time because he does the extra points. You got a couple guys that can kick the football, and I know no points are guaranteed, but it's a good shot that you could get three out of this. But you go for the jugular. That's the question. Well, I still think it's going to be Lazaro off tackle. 
off uh, between the tackle and the guard. But while I've got an opportunity, I'm going to plug my show. Uh, working for WKNR these days. Officially, Monday we'll be going 24 hour sports, so you definitely want to tune us in AM 1220. We're going to kick things off with Greg Brenda at 10 a.m. Moving along to Peter Brown, Jeff Singler, and Reggie Rucker. So if you want uh, radio sports, you tune us in to AM 1220. We'll have it covered for you. Ohio State football tomorrow and NFL Sunday starting at 10 on Sundays. Fourth down, less than a yard to go. Up the middle, touchdown. Lazaro over left tackle that time, so you were close. But they give it to the man that put him all the way down the field. And Brush now goes back on top by a score of 16 to 14. What a ball game, huh? There it is again. Wow, big hole. Scott, he was untouched going into the end zone. I think he was waiting to get hit so much he lost his balance and fell five yards deep. Well, that's one, one constant in all sports. You go with what gets you there. Pops, puts it up, and it is good. Almost blocked that time. Nicely done by Justin Sanford. So with 1.24 to go, 17-14, to the Brush Arts lead it. But it's going to be fun sitting down with Kerry Polachek this weekend and getting the highlights of this one. We might be able to do a whole show just on the highlights. A lot of good stuff. Not much of a surprise there. Again, Lazaro carried 75% of those plays. Only a yard out, less than a yard. Give it to the man. Straight up the shoot, comes away with the touchdown. And this has got to be wonders. Do wonders for this for this young brush offense. A lot of confidence because they're moving against a tough orange. I mean, orange is no pushover. You know, it's. I hate to even think this way because every game is so different. But you look at what Solon did to Brush last week, and if you're Chuck Reislin, you're just hoping that was a fluke. Well, when I talked to him he, before we did our little open at the beginning, he said that, that the kids really didn't seem to be ready mentally for last week's game. I said, well, what was the difference this week? They were ready. They were a little bit embarrassed last week. Tipton going to drill it into the end zone, and that's an automatic touchback in high school football. Oh, my. 60 yards in the air. Diari puts the foot in the end zone, and look at this brush defense on the field, and up to Lance Reislin to rally the troops here. And I think in the second half here, the group of fellas you see in the brown and gold right now, they are the ones that have, that have keyed this second half surge by the brush offense. They all they started it down by holding Orange when Orange was knocking on that door inside the 35-yard line. So a minute 23 to go in the third quarter. 17 to 14, the lead has swung back and forth. And now it's Orange's turn to get the ball and try to march it down the field against this brush art defense. Starry right up the middle for a couple of yards. Tackle made by Chris Sicardi. I'll tell you what, after looking around, and it's tough to compare from year to year, but the new lights they have here at Corb Field. I would. I remember the end zones here used to be a problem. Now the, the end zones are no problem. This is very well lit. They've only got the four light poles. You know something else I just noticed, Craig. The uh, the orange fans. I pointed out to you before yeah. the game. There were about nine. They've got a nice little turnout here. So yeah, they do. and they uh, they made the trip. It's a, a worthwhile trip for them. They've got a great ball game. 17-14 with just over a minute 15 to go here in the third quarter. Trying to do something down on the field. Let's see what's going on. They're going to spot the ball. I think just give him a second down. The ball. The ball. No. 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 I don't know what the problem is down there. We couldn't hear anything. But shoes, like shoe wants an explanation from uh, the referee. Ah, they say an accidental flag fell out of someone's pocket. We're right here looking onto the field, and we can't see it. And Kerry Posick down in the truck, the he's, magical eyes. He's, he's got those spies down he there. He sees all. He is the guru. Second down and four. Up the middle they go again to Ascari. And I believe he's across the 30, and that would be a first down. You know, Craig, 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Orange doesn't have to be in any rush. They don't have to pass. They don't have to change their game plan at all. They're only down three points. They've got a whole quarter. They've proved that they can move the ball. 
no need to panic at this point. And what's killed him is the turnovers. Sure. Uh, Sh uh, Jim Shukar's not buying it. <laughs> Whatever. He's not happy. First down and 10 now for the Lions. They're moving the ball outside their own 30-yard line. Up the middle, they go to Hatcher. The one thing that I've noticed about the runners tonight, Scott, is the fact that none of these guys want to go down. There's a lot of runners that we see that get hit, and they'll give it a little second effort, and then they go down. These guys, are still their legs are still pumping even when they're down on the ground. You know, Craig, I take that back. I said Coach Shukart isn't happy. I don't think he is. I think he's very pleased with the offensive output that this team has shown tonight. And I talked to him about, uh, in the open, about the inexperience that he has on defense. I think this defense has done an outstanding job against, again, a good, tough, solid orange de uh, this is team. A, this orange team will definitely contend for the CBC. Hatcher again left side, picks up another couple of yards. That's the end of the third quarter. You want to take it from there? We have come to the end of three. Score has bounced back and forth. We'll bounce to a commercial. 17-14 is the score. And we'll be back. I'm sitting in this seat because I'm interested in the here and now and the future, my future. That's why I joined the Army National Guard. Today's Guard is an Army ready to respond. An Army coordinated to advance its skills beyond the here and now. There may be easier ways to spend a couple days a month, a few weeks a year, but none of them will move you into the 21st century like the Army Guard. If you're interested in your future, here and now, call this number. Seventeen to fourteen is the score as we start the fourth and final quarter from Corb Field, the home of the Brush Arks, as they host the Orange Lions in a independent matchup. Brush, of course, from the Greater Cleveland Conference, and Orange, one of the contenders this year in the Chagrin Valley Conference. Reisland hangs on to it; he's going to keep it. Got some room across the 45, down to the 47. They don't run that very often with the option, but it appears to me that Reisland's got very good awareness and he understands how it's supposed to be done. The play works well, but as I mentioned, probably the first or second time they ran it, it's not something that you want to run a whole lot with your quarterback keeping the ball. He gets banged up too much. So it's a first down and 10 now. Orange trying to get the lead back. Ball's on the 47-yard line. Right up the gut they go. It's Ascari. Ari Ascari. That's spelled A R Y A. Is the first name. Dan Lazaro, linebacker for Brush, was up close on the line of scrimmage. Got great penetration, but overran the play. I mean, he was in the backfield, and the running back was already past him. Too quick. Too quick. <laughs> Second down and six for the Lions. That's where you have to be able to read and react as opposed to attack and overrun the ball. They come near side, it's Hatcher. Nice job of stringing it out there by Hans Drews. The tackle was finally made by Tipton and Intorchio. But Drews did the job pushing him out wide. Well, the brush defense may be uh, inexperienced, but I'll tell you what, they're playing a heck of a ball game, and they're doing some things with their sets and their shades, as Coach Shukart call it, and they're, they're guessing right. They're always seem to be on the correct side of the field. And they're, as you mentioned, they string it out, and they're just playing some good, solid day. Tony Gray's back in the ball game for Orange, as well as Justin Gross. It's a third down and six. I'm sure we'll get to see the arm of Lance Reisland here. Ascari and Hatcher in the backfield. Reisland with the play action. He's looking for Gross. Dumps it to Hershey across the middle. That was probably the third receiver that he checked off on and gets the first down to the 35-yard line. Good coverage back there by Brush, but even better protection by the Orange offensive line, allowing Reisland to take the time to find an open receiver. I don't know if I would necessarily say it was good coverage because... In Torcio trying to follow the receiver was just a few steps behind. What he did was he found the spot in the zone, and as you mentioned, Ryzen made a good pass. It's a first and ten now on the 35-yard line up the middle. They go. It's Hatcher. He's into the defensive backfield before he's dropped by number 27, Greg Williams. And Williams, again, another sophomore on this brush arc team. Correct me if I'm wrong, Craig, but that's pretty much the biggest rushing play out of a running back all night. I... 
would say you're probably right. They're, I mean, they're not going to have good three, four, five-yard runs, which you expect, but, you know, usually once a night you're going to get a good 15, 20-yarder. That's our first of the evening. An official's timeout. An ear pad has flown out of the helmet of Chris Sicardi. Again, we'll see you if you're watching this game on Friday night. We will see you tomorrow afternoon from Spartan Stadium. I also want to apologize to Matt Hershey. He was the receiver on that uh, tight end route. I want to apologize for not getting his name out. Come on out there tomorrow if you get a chance and maybe be seen on the sports page. Up the middle they go. And I believe that that is Ascari once again. Old Steve Heister. He, at least one member of the, uh, his family will be representative. He, uh, represented at the game tomorrow. He said that uh, his mother may be stopping. Well, his, his mother's a big fan. She's always at the basketball games. Yeah, it's like Steve is only there out, out at the games, only out of like obligation. It doesn't seem like his heart's really in it. Well, he'll be out on his choo-choo tomorrow. <laughs> Second down and seven. It's Hatcher. Both teams appear to be just keeping it on the ground and really moving the ball well, however. It's in the game plan. Well, this second half, we're seeing exactly what the coaches told us ahead of time and told us earlier in the week. They are predominantly running teams. They will pass when necessary or to kind of mix it up. But we haven't seen, you know, three or four pass plays here in the second half. So this really is no surprise. Jeff Carter checks into the ball game for brush on defense. A third down and two to go. The ball is spotted on the 14-yard line. If they don't pick up any more yardage, it would be about a 31-yard attempt. Ryan Novak of strong leg as well, definitely in his range. But at hand, Risland pitches it back to Hatcher. Can he get around the end? I don't think he did it. I don't think he got the first down. Risland, oh, we've got flags a flying, and that could be trouble for Brush. Brush may have been a little overzealous once again, and it that might, is not a smart move. It might have been Dan Lazau. He looked like he may have been a little six. Foul. Wow. Mm. I think I heard a number with a six on the end. Might have been Dave Perlman, 26. He's one of the starters back there. We're going to the six. Another mental oh. mistake. Not, see again. Oh. Personal foul. Defense. Down and goal. When you do it at the 50-yard line, that's one thing. When you do it and the team has got the ball at your 10, just not the place to do it. There's a good look at Orange head coach Chuck Reislin watching his son Lance lead the offense, trying to get them into the end zone. The ball from the six. Fiari. Close to the three. You know, I guess if there's, you can deal with, not that you can deal with, but holding calls come, clips come, motion comes, but when you lose your temper is exactly what that turns out to be. You lose your cool. There's no excuse for that, it, no matter whether it's your 50, especially when you're at the six, and you make, you just made a great play. And now you blow that play by losing your cool, and that's just not the way to go. I don't know who that last foul was on. I think what he was saying was we're going to move the ball to the six, so we don't want to blame Dave Perlman or whoever else has got a six in their number. Up the middle, they go to Fiari again behind that offensive line. Looks to be about the one. And the worst thing about those personal fouls, again, as you, as you just mentioned, is when it's your, the way you respond, and you, you get carried away with something. If that if that is going to lead to the other team scoring some points and you cost the ball game, you know it's a lot that happens out in basketball with technical fouls. All of a sudden, it changes the complexity of the ball game. The ball's on the yard and a half line, I guess. Long, long look down there. Reislin under center sneaks it again. The big body gets in for the touchdown. So Orange comes back and answers. The brush touchdown with one of their own. 20 to 17 with 6.52 to go. We'll call it Lance Reislin from one yard out. Just stretch that big body across the goal line. A nice surge by the offensive line. Lance did that in the third quarter. That's your safest play. You only have to make one, the ball, you only have to transaction the ball one time. Transaction the ball. Ryan Novak into attempt the point after to get us to a four-point spread, and it is.
is a four point spread. So 21 to 17 is the score, 6.52 to go in this one. And it may come down to the team that has the ball last. And you know what else is impressive, Craig, is again, these are not two teams that are quick strikes. You know, uh, we saw Euclid last week with a couple of guys, Rashawn Jernigan scores from, 80, uh, from 85 yards like that. These two teams are very methodical, on the ground, one or two passes to go 60, 70 yards. Takes up a lot of clock. Very impressive drive by the Orange Lions, and you see Chuck Reisland tapping the helmet of a couple of his players. He's got to be pleased with that drive. We said 6.52 remains in this one. You know, Back deep for Brush. Mark Santorelli, remember the problems he had on the last kickoff. Muffed it at the three-yard line. Yeah, well, uh, uh, remember the problems we're going to have. We have to pick oh. the notice players of the game. Not just one. We have to pick one yeah, from each side. Your and job, this, man. Oh, you know, my opinion is never asked before the telecast, but it's always pushed <laughs> upon me when it comes to the tough stuff. I can't go wrong tonight. There have been so many kids that have made uh, great contributions on both sides. I can't go wrong. Ryan Novak kicks it straight down the center of the field. It will be taken by Santorelli at the 5. Gets through the wedge and is close to the 25-yard line. Flags fly out at the 40. And I think somebody may have made a mistake and blocked the kicker wrong or clipped the kicker who is about 20 yards downfield from the play. I would love to see a replay on this. Number 45 for Orange, Justin Sanford. Just so clipping. Let's see if we can see number 45. Justin Sanford just throws his body through the, the wedge of the brush arc. See if we see him fly through. There he goes. I mean, he didn't. I don't think he accomplished what he set out to do, but he was not afraid to put his body on the line. On the return. Fast flipping on the receiving ball. team. First you know, we, never, we haven't got a chance to call his name out very much here in this ball game, but Chuck Risen told me that he thinks uh, Justin Sanford can be one of the best linebackers in the CBC this season, so we'll have to see what he can do later, later on. First down and 10. Lazaro. Dragging Jason Merchant on his back, close to the 15-yard line. Actually going to spot it at about the 14, so give him a gain of two on the play. A little bit of a surprise on that call. I mean, not that they ran the ball, but that they ran it outside. Their last drive was predominantly between the tackles. So, again, you, you tend to like to keep with what's successful, and they really have been very successful running outside. Officials timeout. I saw a good friend of mine in the stands tonight, Les Levine, is here. Of course, he follows me on Saturday. There's so many of those guys around anymore, isn't there? You can't tell the players without a scorecard. All right, second down and eight to go. Wallace to throw, has Tipton on the far side, and it's a first down, close to the 30-yard line. Adam Lustig on the tackle, and that's a first down for Brush. Wallace hasn't thrown the ball in about an hour. That time he connects. Well, Jim Shukard really throwing me off balance. First he runs outside the tackle. Now he throws the ball down deep in his own territory. But Wallace, give him credit. Nice set himself. Nice solid pass to Tipton. Gets himself a first down and gets himself a much better field position. Well, you kind of lull the defense to sleep, I think. It's run, 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 sure. run for the last hour. And Watch now, out. And down he goes. Justin Weiss, number 70 on the... Tackle. Wallace didn't have a chance to even set himself that day. He was being chased right out of the uh, center. I may have went, well, I can't say going to the well once too often, but when we mentioned when you run the ball so much, you want to use the pass as an alternative once in a while. If you start going to something that you're not real successful at, you're bound to get burned. Second and 19. Now you just picked up a nice first down. Now you lose nine yards, so you really haven't gotten anything out of it. Perlman. First time he's carried the ball in a while. Close to the 25-yard line. Gets a couple of them back, but a third down play. And you know, the clock is starting to become a factor. You're talking under five minutes and 445. 75 yards away, and you cannot win it with the... You can't even tie it with the field goal. So, you, so Brush has to come away with the touchdown. 
see what kind of play calling they come up with. Say what, Ed Wallace is hobbling noticeably. He goes back to throw. He's got Tipton again and oh! he the ball. Oh! Ed Wallace with a terrific pass to Tipton right off his fingertips. Andre Hatcher was right there, but that was definitely a catchable ball for oh. Bill Tipton. Look at Tipton set up. Nice four-step drop. Right, not even on the numbers, right on the hands. And he knew it, too. Oh, That's Bill it. Tipton going to be kicking himself for the rest of the evening. Fourth down and 14 now. And but Tipton gets a chance to take his frustration <laughs> out on the football. He may hit this one to Mars. He needs to shake that off real quick. He needs to concentrate on this play here. He had the 42-yard field goal earlier in the game and an end-over-end -end punt. We'll take a brush bounce. And down by Kevin Ramsey. Orange with excellent field position now on the 46-yard line in their own territory, and the clock definitely on their side, especially the kind of offense they've been running, Scott, which has been grinded out right on the ground, 421 to go. This is not a good situation for Brush. They had Tipton makes that catch. You've got a first down at about the 50-yard line, and the, and the uh, drive continues. Now you've got Orange, as you mentioned, have just moved the ball so well on the ground. Great field position at their own 46 with uh, just over four minutes, so Brush has really got to tighten the screws here. Reisland runs the option, picks up across the 50, got a lot of room to the 40, and goes down at the 30-yard line. Like we say, they don't, we haven't seen the option a lot, but every time they've run it, they have run it with success. And if we can get a look on the replay, Justin Weiss makes not one, but two nice blocks here at the bottom of your screen. There's one, some up on the inside, and then he gets tipped in to push Ryzen to the outside. Just outstanding blocking. That'll look good on the film. By Justin Weiss. First down and 10 for Orange. The ball spotted right on the 30-yard line of Brush. Right up the middle they go. It's Ascari for a couple of yards. And Brush has to stop Orange now. They cannot let Orange come away with another first down. Then you get to the point where Brush has to start uh, burning their own timeouts. And as we've seen, not the greatest passing team in the world. You hate to have to come back when passing isn't your strength. Sicardi on the tackle. And after this, one, we'll be talking to the winning coach in the coach's corner. And at this point, looking like Chuck Reisland, but you never know. Yeah, but for once, it's not a clear-cut name just yet. That's right. We're used to naming them sometimes at halftime. Second down, seven. Reisland going to run the option again. This time he pitches it back. And a big hit there. What do we got? Oh, fumbled it out of bounds. Pitched the ball back to Justin Sanford. And Lance Reisland took a major pop. He's just getting up off the 30-yard line. If we get a look at the replay, see if we can see the kind of hit that Lance Reisland takes. There's the quarterback. Oh, he was drugged down from behind. It looks like he was shaking up just a little bit. But look at the great camera work. Who is that down there? Third down and six now, 3.02 to go as the ball was fumbled out of bounds and the clock stopped. Rush needs to tighten up right here. Hatcher, nowhere. Maybe a yard. Sicardi on the bottom of the pile, and I think Brush is going to take a timeout with 2.54 to go. Yeah, let's see. The ball is on the 25. It'd be a 42-yard attempt. I don't know. I don't know enough about... Ryan Novak to decide whether 42 yards. It certainly kicks the ball off well, but that's a whole different ball game. Just under three minutes of 2.54 to go. Until it hurts. I believe I got the name from the truck. It was Rob on the uh, camera. Bob. Uh, Bob, nice camera work down there. And for, you know what, it's great because he didn't get himself hurt either. Right in the middle of it, we've seen so many cameramen go down. Such a congenial crew we have here, huh? Yeah, but, but we're too nice. We Who was telling me that before the, before the game that we're all too nice? my first year here like five years ago Bruce got chopped at the knees <laughs> face down boom right in the, and it was well, give the cameraman credit they're not afraid to get in on the action oh you don't see Bruce here do you yeah. Reisland rolls out being chased gets it off there's a the turnover he forced the pass 
Perlman on the far side will be dragged down. That's just as good as not picking up anything for Orange, however. And Brush will get it back with 2.43 to go. Could have been a lot worse, but it evens out. They don't have to move the sticks too far, maybe five yards in the other but direction. It's, it's still another force pass. You see he's under, under uh, pressure, and instead of maybe throwing the ball out of bounds in the general direction, he tried to force it in, and there's another turnover. And again, uh, Orange keep the ball on the ground, eat the clock up a little bit, but you turn it over again. Two and a half minutes to go. We'll see how Ed Wallace holds up here. He's hobbling noticeably. He goes back to throw. And he's going to run, not hobbling too much there. Hit and dropped across the 40 to the 41-yard line. And it's really exciting as you see the crowd down below. It's really getting involved, cheering and on their feet, clapping. This is, this is a really exciting uh, finish here. It's something that we don't often get a lot of. David Perlmuter on the tackle. Also, Wallace did a nice job of changing uh, the ball from one hand to the other. Second down and three. Wallace to throw again. Looks underneath, looking for Vance Trone and overthrows it. But that'll stop the clock with a minute 56 to go. Well, Wallace started to feel the pressure. He'd been, he's been under pressure all night passing the ball. I think he may have pulled the trigger just a second. Yes, maybe just a second early. As you see, Vance Trone didn't get an opportunity, I don't think, to finish his pattern. The one time that uh, Wallace had the opportunity to take some time, he didn't do it. Third down and three, and the Lions hoping for one more defensive effort here. <laughs> Going to run it. They give it to Lazaro. And he is short by a yard or so. Tripped up by Andy Zurich. Go oh, check that, number 70. And Andy Zurich. Justin uh, Weiss. Number 70. Justin Weiss. Shaking up a little bit. Looks so like he may have got the wind knocked out of him. He's holding his either his wrist or his, his rib cage. And he's shaking up a lot. Can't really tell if it's his forearm, his wrist, or his hand. Yeah, he's he's definitely dangling his left arm a little bit. So a minute and 39 to go. It'll be a fourth down for Brush, and this may about do it. Brush has exhausted two of their three timeouts, something they didn't do in the first half at all. I think they only used the one, but they used two early here. They need to pick up a first down. See if we can look on the replay, what happens to Weiss. There's number 70 at the side of your screen. It looks like he may have hit his left hand, maybe got a cut between a couple of helmets, or maybe banged his thumb into a helmet. That'll give you a bad attitude. Oh. Here you see the orange players trying to get both teams now trying to cheer, get their fans to cheer them on. Fourth down and three. Wallace to run the option, cuts it back, and he I think might, he's got the he first just down. Might have it. Depends on where they spot it. He bounced forward, but where they spot it, and will definitely get a measurement here. And I think he's short. I, I think he's just short. I think he is too where they spot it. I think he's short by about half the length of the football. And how many times have we said it isn't where he hits the ground, it's where the official spots the ball. That's right. But it looked like he hit and possibly bounced another foot or so. We'll see. We we think uh, well, we're only a mile away, so <laughs> and it's late. But there's no window in front of us. And he is just short by half short. the length of the football. And Orange will get it back. Big stand by the Orange Lions. Minute and 17 to go in this one. And Orange has come here to avenge last year's loss, and they're a minute 17 away from doing so. And again, if things stay the way they are right now, we will have Coach Chuck Reisland in the coach's corner. Uh, and Scott will tell you who his picks are <laughs> for the player of the game. Coming up after this. I've got a name in mind. A name, but we're supposed to have two of them. Up the middle they go to Fiari. Bangs ahead to the 40-yard line. And Brush will probably take their last timeout. They may not even take a timeout. It's pretty anticlimactic right now. And they're not going to take the timeout. What can you do? Under 30 seconds to go. A disappointing night for the Brush Arcs. A lot of good things came out of this, I think. And when you're talking about a team like Orange, who should be in the hunt when it comes to the CVC, 
this is a big game to win to come back a couple of times against a bigger school than you and a team that is definitely on its way back. Brush playing much better football than they have in the last couple of years. And, and between this year and next year, you're going to see some good football here at Corb Field. As we mentioned, going into going into the uh, the conference is coming up. This is uh, you know, Brush was no walkover. They were they were beaten pretty soundly last week, but they put up a good fight. This is a very good test for the Orange team, getting ready for the CBC as well as Brush for the GCC. Both tough conferences. Shoot, Jim Shukart takes time out, and I'm sure he normally doesn't come out on defense, only offense. I'm sure he's telling the guys, hey, it's been a classy game all the way through, and there's 13 seconds to go, and let's leave the field the way we came on the field with our heads up in class. Speaking of class, the class of the pizza business, Geppetto's Pizza, great ribs also. The first place in taste, the place that gives us our great pizza is the South Euclid store on Mayfield Road, 691 1,000, give them a call, say, hey, we saw you guys on the game of the week, and we want some of that pizza. Say, hey. Also, Warehouse Beverage, right across the street, 382-2400. Monotas Trophies and Awards, who will be presenting the Player of the Game Award at 291-3210. If you have any awards that you'd like made. Lance Reisling goes down for the last time, and that will do it. We have come to the end of this one. Orange goes to 2-0. and Brush drops to 0-2, but a fine effort on both sides today. Big win for the Orange Lions, and as we said, Brush's offense kind of getting on track a little bit there, Scott. They scored 17 points, and not a bad showing. You know, when I asked uh, Coach Shukart at the top what he found positive in the Solon game, he gave a few comments. I think he's got to be real pleased with the offensive showing. Again, they came up with a donut last week at Solon. Come away with 17 points against a tough orange squad. And I think he's got to be very pleased with it. And again, he also mentioned a lot of inexperience on the defense. Just, just a real solid showing on both sides of the ball for the Arcs. All right, 21-17 to 17 is the final score. We'll come back. We'll have the coach's corner, some final stats, the players of the game. We'll do all that after you. Watch this. This infernal problem is consuming me. It's an ugly.